I wanted to do a little bit of a demonstration on why text hierarchy is important and why we pay attention to the fonts we use, their sizing, and the different styles within the fonts. So this is a piece of text that we might see in our portfolios. We have a title, a subtitle, a bunch of information about the uh, project itself, and then a little description. We can all look at this and say, that the important information is not really standing out. That's because there's no text hierarchy. There's nothing to tell us that this random title is more important or um, more informative than the body text down here. So what we want to use text hierarchy and fonts for is to make information stand out so that it's a lot easier to read. I think that instinctively we would all want to give our title um, a different weight. So probably if we were just using a default font like Arial, which I think a lot of people do, you might just go down here and make that bold, um, for example. So you might have that instinct. You might say, well, this is a little bit less important, so maybe I'm going to make that italic. Um, and then you might go in here and set these to bold as well. And that way you begin to um, differentiate between pieces of text so that the eye can look at this and understand which information needs to be read first and what is additional or supplementary. But why we don't use default fonts is not because they're bad fonts, but because when we are applying for a job in a design profession, we want to showcase that we have an understanding of the importance of design to uh, bring order and and legibility to our world. So our mediums might be different. We might be doing architecture or urban design or landscape. But within all of those professions, we want to set ourselves apart as professionals. And so when we use a default font, it might say to a future employer that you're not aware of the field of graphic design and typography and that you're not aware of how to use it properly. A lot of people underestimate the role of branding and graphics and in their marketing materials, on their websites, and in their printed documents, but these really do have an impact and they, um, they show that you have an understanding of the rules of design. So I wanna give you an example of how we might transform this entire um, set of text into a better hierarchy using just one font. I'm going to use Europa. So the first thing I'm gonna do is set the title to Europa Bold. And whenever you see a situation like this where the font stops showing up and you have this little red box, you can just double click on the top and it will uh, expand that window to accommodate the text size. So I'm going to give this a hierarchy that is more important because it's a title font. So I'm going to increase this to, let's say 48. Now we have a title. Then I'm going to take this subtitle, give it the Europa light italic, double click on the top, and I'll keep it at 24. Then I'm gonna take this entire block of text and I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. I'm gonna set it down to 20 because these are details that uh, are important, but they don't need to take up that much space. If you want to reduce the size of a box because you have extra space at the bottom, you can double click on the handle and it will change the text, the box to accommodate it. So I'm gonna go through and I'm going to make everything Europa. I actually am gonna make it Europa light. And then I'm going to just select these headings and make those Europa bold. Now, if you are a smart person and you watched the previous tutorial, you know that you can select a piece of text, go to your libraries and add a character style. So if I did that, then I could just select this next one and apply the character style and keep going like that. So I don't have to select the font within my font palette every single time. With this, I'm going to, again, set it to Europa. I'm gonna use the regular. And already this is reading a lot better, but what about some of the more um, subtle things like spacing? 
I would probably want to set this title apart a little bit and bring the subtitle up. You see that if you have guides turned on, which you can check by going to view and then grids and guides and see if smart guides are turned on. If smart guides are turned on, you're going to get these little arrows that help you understand the spacing between objects. So now we have regular, um, the same spacing between the title and the subtitle versus the subtitle and the, the rest of the text. So I'm going to leave that there. And with this one, you see there's the text has been overset. So I'm just going to expand this. When it comes to body text, I think that the first inclination for people to uh, set this is to go into your paragraph styles and give it a, um, a block justification, something like that. Oftentimes you'll see center justified with a block um, or even something like this. Now, what's the problem with using this type of justification? The spacing between letters is completely random. It is just taking whatever text is in the line and squishing it to, exp to either expand or contract to fit within the box. That is not what we want. We always want to use um, proper alignment to left or right. This edge is called the um, ragged edge. It's, it's a rag. So it's, uh, it's uneven, but the spacing between the words is the same throughout the text. And this is what we want for legibility. We never, ever, ever want to use this. It makes the text completely difficult to read. Um, it's unpredictable with the spacing, and that's not what we want. We always want to use um, proper alignment. The other thing we'll look at is the space between the lines. And almost always, I think we can expand this to make it more legible. So I'll go into my character palette. I see that the auto set is 28.8. So I'm just gonna bump that up to 36. Maybe that's a little too much. So I'll take it down to 32. And I'll just ex expand this to uh, make sure I'm accommodating all my overset text. And already that's reading a lot better. We have one little issue here, which is that we have an orphan. So we definitely don't want any orphan words in our text. So I'm just gonna drag this forward until I get um, a ragged edge that doesn't have any orphans. And the last thing I'll check is in my paragraph that I do not have hyphenate set on. We don't wanna hyphenate our text in our portfolios. And I think that we can see that now this piece of text is a lot easier to read than the original, which had no hierarchy, no sizing, and no spacing. We might even take this bit of text and just uh, put it right in between the subtitle and the paragraph text below. And now I think that reads even better. Um, there's always little refinements you can make. So if you are using an accent color, you might want to change your text. So if you go into your swatches and you click on the text tool, then you will be altering just the text itself like this. So I hope that helps you understand the importance of text hierarchy, spacing, and font sizes while you're going through and designing your portfolio. So this kind of information is a lot easier to read than just a block of text that has the only distinction being some is bold and some is not.